Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on assessing e-mobility, pilots and scaled-up concepts from the perspective of the living labs. You have heard from the previous presentation about the theoretical concepts and methodological steps that had been developed towards the formulation of the evaluation framework, the key performance indicators, and the associated steps that had been adopted within the context of the Solutions Plus project. Now, I'll be discussing these with a more on-the-ground lens and discuss the challenges that we had encountered, as well as the practical solutions and strategies that we had implemented and integrated in terms of realizing the evaluation process that would then feed into determining and refining impactful, transformative, and feasible scaled-up concepts within the framework of the project. My name is Alvin Mejia, and I'm a senior researcher working with the Mobility and International Cooperation Research Unit of the Wuppertal Institute. I am involved in the coordination of the demonstration actions under the Solutions Plus project, in particular, those in the Asian region. And I also was involved in the elaboration of the evaluation framework that has been adopted in Solutions Plus. Let me first give you a quick overview of my presentation. We will first go over a review of the process that has been taken within the context of Solutions Plus in relation to the user's needs assessment, the formulation of the key performance indicators, and how we are dealing with the relevant processes such as data collection, stakeholder engagement, and ultimately the analysis of the results. In each of these steps, I will be going through the main lessons, practical challenges, as well as the solutions that we had taken towards the implementation of the assessment and evaluation so relevant to the demonstration and the scaled up concepts within the project. Allow me to go through the steps that have been taken or are to be taken within the framework of the evaluation activities in Solutions Plus. As you can see, on this slide, there are several main components related to the assessment and evaluation activities, starting with the user needs assessment, then moving forward with the KPI selection and weighting, which then guides the actual data collection processes. Once the data has been collected, we then move towards the analytical and descriptive assessment and the evaluation of the KPIs, and ultimately the analysis of the results. Please note that the scaled up concepts based on the demonstrations are the main subject of the KPI evaluation. However, it is also important to note that the monitoring and assessment of perf the performance of the demonstration or pilots, as well as the data and information geared at capturing city level situations are important towards informing this process. I will make use of specific experiences related to one of the demonstration actions that we are currently doing within the context of Solutions Plus, the one in Pasig City, Philippines. This is to better provide context-specific insights and examples in relation to the Solutions Plus evaluation processes. The city of Pasig is one of the 16 cities comprising Metropolitan Manila in the Philippines, and as with many cities in the region, Pasig is currently grappling with rapid economic growth, population growth, and the stresses that such put into the urban transportation system. Urban passenger transport in the city can be characterized as having low service quality, poor integration, which leads people towards buying more vehicles. In the case of Metro Manila, motorcycles and small vehicles are rapidly growing due to their competitiveness, not only in terms of cost of ownership, but also in terms of travel speeds. There has also been an explosion in e-commerce and thus urban goods movement shifting from shopping trips to delivery trips has been accelerated and has been further accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Considering these trends, challenges, and potentials as a background, the demonstration activities in Pasig 
are centered around the design, production, and testing of innovative e-mobility technologies and services. On the vehicle side of things, the demonstration supports the production of multi-purpose electric vehicles. The one on the left is a rendition of the flexible e-quad model that is capable of catering to both passenger and cargo movements within the tighter roads in the urban areas of Pasig, and the production of which is directly supported by the project. Solutions Plus is also tied up with another initiative being funded by the national government, which focuses on the production and testing of a larger version of the e-quad, or the flexible electric van, the one in the middle. This has higher capacities in terms of passengers and cargo, but both vehicle models are to be integrated with smart technologies such as vehicle sensors that would allow them to be monitored in terms of real-time performance, location, capacities, etc. Which brings me to the next major technological component of the project, which is the provision of a novel shared services application suite. This would enable users to book the vehicles and for administrators to monitor the vehicle's performance real time. Suitable charging modalities are also being designed based on the transportation tasks and are currently geared towards utilizing fast charging technologies. These vehicles are intended to be used directly by the local government unit in Pasig, as well as the Philippine Postal Corporation within Pasig, and to be tested by independent small, medium-sized enterprises within the context of the pilot. Ultimately, the goal is to pro provide a city-wide platform for owners of EVs, whether institutions, potentially individuals, to enroll their EVs into a shared system for them to maximize the utilization and gain benefits from the latent capacity of their EVs which would then make the case for owning EVs more attractive. Let us now go through the different steps. Firstly, the user needs assessment provides insights towards a better understanding of the actual needs of the different priority stakeholders in the cities that we are working with. This procedure does not only provide a basis for evaluating the impacts of the demonstration and later on the scaled up concepts, but it also provides a sound basis for defining and refining the activities and components for the different demonstration applications. As you have seen from the baseline example and the solution proposed in PASIG, there are different dimensions that we had to take into consideration. Firstly, we recognize the fact that e-mobility needs to feed into the goals of different stakeholders at different levels. For example, explorations on how the different levels of government and the goals that are relevant to them needed to be accounted for. For example, relevant national level ministries such as the Department of Transportation, Department of Energy, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the Department of Trade and Industry needed to be consulted in the process, not only in terms of users' needs assessment, but later on in terms of the KPI weighting, for example, among others. This would ensure that the maximum level of alignment of the exercise would be achieved to support the fruition of the relevant goals at different levels, whether this may be national, regional, local, uh, level goals and the final actual users of the technologies and services need to also be consulted within this procedure related to this concept is the recognition of the multi-dimensionality of the topic of e-mobility and the need to include the different sectors into the process of user needs assessment as mentioned earlier stakeholders from the quadruple helix living lab framework. We talk about government, civil society, private sector, academe, were included in this process. This does not only ensure that we ensure inclusivity in the process, but also minimize the potential resistance changes to be brought about the innovations later on. 
is all feed into gaining insights towards the prioritization of goals and feed into the refinement of the demonstration concept and later on towards the conceptualization of the scaled up concept. The selection of the KPIs as well as the weighting process proved to be not a straightforward exercise. The conversations with the local stakeholders, the formulation of the KPIs, and the selection of the KPIs, and the weighting process were conducted in an iterative process as the project needed to both take into account goals and needs at the local level and find commonalities between these across the different cities. The main challenge with the Solutions Plus Evaluation Framework is that it needs to be an inclusive enough to cater to priority goals related to implementing e-mobility concepts in different contexts, as reflected by those that have been identified in the different partner cities, coupled with the complexities brought about by the differences in the use cases that are to be tested in the different demonstration sites. The project itself works with nine different cities globally and features a variety of e-mobility solutions and use cases ranging from shared e-scooters, shared e-bikes, shared e-cargo vehicles, e-paratransit, and e-vehicle conversion. This underlines the ultimate importance of building a common understanding of the framework and the KPIs and leveling off with the local stakeholders. The framework needed to be globally valid, but also useful at the local context. This is why an iterative process was needed, as the general pillars and dimensions of the evaluation are discussed at the global level, and the definition of the specific indicators also happened at the local level. This is also the reason why flexibility has been embedded in the guidance that had been provided to the cities in terms of assessing the KPIs. We recognize that the level of data availability, capacities, um, contexts differs for each of the pilot demonstration sites, and these need to be taken into account for any KPI assessment exercise to be useful. We also note that the importance of different priorities may be different not only between cities to cities, but also within stakeholders within a specific city or context. For example, in the case of PASIT, which is also true in some of the other cities, that climate mitigation goals may be important to national government entities, and maybe to some extent to city governments, but may be totally an alien concept to local enterprises or citizens who may be the intended final users of the innovation. These nuances need to be taken into account. We now go to data collection. As mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, the whole evaluation exercise within the project focuses on evaluating scaled up transformative e-mobility concepts that are to be fed by information and data from the level of the pilot activities, as well as data and information at the wider city, or in some cases, national level. The box on the left depicts the importance of monitoring critical performance data and indicators that relate to the demonstration and its components. For example, we have earmarked continuous monitoring of detailed vehicle activity data, transport task data, such as vehicle loads, and other sorts of important information, such as those related to energy efficiency, safety incidences, charging performance, user perception, and sentiments. Please bear in mind that these are not a complete list of parameters that are included in the data monitoring plan. The collection of data reflecting the performance of the demonstration components would then allow us to derive critical parameters towards answering the question, how do these perform? Which would then feed into the assessment of the scaled up concept later on. 
So in the case of PASIG, smart sensors are to be installed into the vehicles, into the charging system, and together with the digital features of the vehicle sharing suite would enable us to gather detailed data on their performance. The other types of important data, such as user sentiments and feedback, need to be embedded into qualitative data collection processes, such as surveys and consultations. On the other hand, towards the right, wider sets of data are also being collected towards enabling the definition of the baseline and project scenarios that would be used in assessing the scaled up concepts later on. We would need to take stock of scenarios wherein the scaled up concept would not push through and thereby knowing what the impacts might be. We are also embarking on the collection of qualitative information that would feed into answering some of the important qualitative questions that had been included in the evaluation framework, such as those that relate to policy responses. The combination of the demonstration level data that will be monitored and the data being collected at the wider levels, maybe at the city or perhaps the national level, would then enable the assessment of the scaled up concepts later on. The implementation of the demonstration together with the insights from the continuing on the ground discussions with the stakeholders would be used to solidify scaled up concepts, essentially answering the question, what's next? The scaled up concept and its components will be evaluated in relation to the KPI framework and would be used as a guide for further iterating the design of the concept and in the process provide both qualitative and quantitative insights towards finalizing it. We now move towards the analytical and descriptive KPI assessment lumped together with evaluation and results analysis. This step performs two KPI assessment approaches, namely analytical assessment and descriptive assessment. The former aims at generating numerical KPI values for the selected uh, KPIs. The numerical values are required as input to the evaluation tool that was developed within the context of the project and the KPI values are also used in the descriptive assessment towards assessing societal, environment, and economic impacts. The process also entails that the KPI values be translated into a star rating system supported by a tool that was developed for the evaluation procedure. As you can see here, this also entails that stakeholder consultations need to be done as part of this step. The main important thing to note here is that these need the cooperation of and continued interaction with the stakeholders in the demonstration cities. These also reflect the need for practical, locally appropriate, and context-sensitive data-driven approaches. We also recognize the importance of providing tools towards catalyzing the process. In the case of Solutions Plus, detailed guidance on the KPIs, approaches to be used, as well as specific instruments, such as survey forms, calculation sheets, have been or are being developed and shared to the different demonstration cities and partners. In this presentation, we have discussed the main steps that had been adopted in the Solutions Plus project towards the evaluation of key performance indicators and how they relate to associated procedures such as data collection, analysis, evaluation, and the different dimensions and scales that we need to take into consideration throughout the process. We discussed these steps, the user needs assessment, KPI selection and weighting, data collection, analytical and descriptive KPI assessment, KPI evaluation and results assessment, all with a view reflecting the on-the-ground realities. The process needs to recognize that a multi-scalar and multi-dimensional approach towards evaluation is needed, and that iteration 
is naturally a suitable part of the process. You also need to find a balance between finding the flexibility of the approach and robustness of the results in order to ensure the usability as well as the appropriateness of the exercise within the local contexts. The role of coordination and involvement in the process is of central importance, especially if we are taking a holistic and combined qualitative and quantitative approach towards informing our next steps. Finally, the provision of tools is crucial in facilitating the process and striving for alignment of the results.